This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. One. Bingo! That's Sandra O'Hara. Okay, she's my special guest today. We, we, we catch up with each other every now and then, and I, it's always quality time. Um, not that I need it professionally, but some of you do. <laughs> <laughs> she's a, a tech employment expert with ADECO, doing that 18 years. It doesn't look over 18. Anyway, I, I guess whatever you're doing agrees with well, you, Sandra. You. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you, Jay. My pleasure. <laughs> So tell us how you spend your days at ADECO. What's it like? Who do you talk to on a given day? You're on the phone, you're sending email. Who are you speaking with? Well, what, what's been very interesting is, as you know, because the unemployment is so low in Hawaii, um, you know, it, it's, it's very tricky with getting candidates as well as getting, um, pe getting companies that are willing to hire us to find them good people. Um, on one hand, people think, oh, well, it's got to be better now because of the fact that they can't find them on their own. That is partially true, but the problem is, if we can't find it, then there is no exchange of, of or billing. Yeah. So, so it's it's a challenge. But I've always felt that it's it's fun, and because I feel like I'm being a marriage broker. I mean, when you make the right match, it's it great. is absolutely incredible. Yeah. You follow I, them, don't you? Absolutely, because I go yeah. back in and yeah. I, you know, after they're they've been there maybe a, a week or two, and I just check in with how they're doing. And when you walk in, and the company is thrilled because they have a new wonderful employee and the employee is thrilled because they have a new wonderful job you cannot beat that feeling as a match yeah. made in heaven a matchmaker yeah. a matchmaker match maker. <laughs> exactly it's fabulous so you know i, I guess so what, what if i wanted to be i'm not I'm not saying this is necessarily what i would want to be but if i wanted to be a tech employment specialist like with the deco what kind of a person what kind of a person would i be should i be well for one thing you've got to like people Correct, and yeah. I, I, mean, so I know you'd that's fit true with you. <laughs> yeah, and you'd fit perfectly in that realm. Um, and you know, you need to also kind of be a detective because, as you know, people sometimes overstate their qualifications. Uh, you no, kind of, no. <laughs> you have to kind of delve beneath the surface uh -huh. and try and find everything out that you can that's pertinent to the situation. Um, we also um, offer our clientele or, or the companies that um, employ us. A guarantee so we will guarantee that the person's going to work out and stay and so because of that you really want to make the right match it's not worth anybody's time to make the wrong match and have to go and redo yeah, it or yeah. leaves a bad taste absolutely yeah absolutely so what what kind of i mean since you raised that let me ask what kind of economics are there if i come to you as an employer and need somebody uh and, and you know uh, i would because there's a shortage, right, right. of, of skilled, skilled employees. Mm -hmm. So I come to you and I say, find me somebody. What do you say about the economics? What's it going to cost me for that? Well, um, I, and I'm just going to use an average because it does, it, it, it will vary depending if it's nonprofit, depending on if it's really difficult. I would say the average rate is about 20% of the annualized salary. Okay. But again, as I mentioned, that does come with a guarantee that if the person doesn't work out. Within? Well, it's a 90-day guarantee, but it's the first 30 days that you would get all of your money back. Oh, there's a sliding scale. Or that, that's right. Or a perfect replacement. So yeah. one or the other. Or well, replacement. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I'd probably be interested in a replacement. That's right. If one didn't work out. That's wanna, right. You, you know, in my law firm, we had a rule of one of six. We, and I'm not sure that that, that ratio still works anymore. But one out of six people you think are qualified to do the job will actually be able to do really? the job. You have a rule like that. <laughs> no, but that's an interesting way to look at it, though. And, and it worked out for you. I mean, that really worked out to be one of six. Well, we, we hit the one, you know, pretty pretty often. Yeah. But sometimes we hit the five. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now, you know, you had asked me, um, be, you know, as far as coming on the show about tech jobs per se. I wanted to ask you about the market. Right. And okay. I wanted to ask you, you know, first... Uh, since you want to get serious about this, we don't get too serious here. Yeah. You know, um, is what is tech? What is tech for you? What what's the definition of the kinds of jobs that you that are on your desk? Okay, I guess the definition of a tech job would be related to computers and touching computers and programming and I software. Information technology. Exactly. Yeah. So that is the true pure definition of yeah. tech. Yeah. Um, surprisingly, what I have been working on, what seems to be really hot now, is construction. I'm talking about project managers, 
estimators, everything related to construction. Cause construction, you, is it yeah, construction? Because as you know, in Kaka'ako and everything, there is tons of stuff going on. Yeah. But when you asked me to talk about tech jobs and coming on the show for that, I actually did a little bit of homework. Well, good. And I was surprised, I mean, almost shocked that, and I want to give some statistics here, because um, I want people that are out there to know that there is a, a ton of, quote, tech jobs available. Okay, LinkedIn right now has posted 500 tech jobs in Honolulu. Really? Yes. What now, does that mean? Does that mean you're opening something? Yes, oh. yeah, openings. Okay, now, um, on the other hand, another vehicle that I know all your listeners are aware of is Career Builder. Career Builder has posted 128 tech jobs. These are just tech jobs. And another um, vehicle that has posted 224 tech jobs is um, Indeed. So those are kind of the major players. Um, That's a lot for, of jobs. That is a lot of jobs. Now, of course, a lot of it's overlap, right? Because people post their jobs in multiple places, yeah, yeah, so yeah. that doesn't mean that you just would add them up and, and that's the grand total. But I was very pleasantly surprised because, as I mentioned, what's keeping me busy right now is construction. So I'm, think, I'm thinking to myself, hey, I'm overlooking a big market there because if there are that many tech jobs that people are needing to fill, I should try and you know, look into um, helping them in that yeah. arena. So that really was an eye-opener for me. Um, now, these are jobs that are posted where? Posted on um, their their websites. No, they're posted on the major websites that people look at for when they're looking for a job. So that's Career Builder, that's LinkedIn, and then the. It's on their sites then. That, and on you don't, you don't have an exclusive on these. Not at all. But you no. could help a person figure out where to go. That's right. And what 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 the good marriage is going right. to be. That's right. That's right. So I was pleasantly surprised to see how many jobs were posted on those sites, and I think part of the reason why. Um, the, these tech type people that are looking for work know these sites as well is because they're technical so they know you know the, how to use a computer they know how to search for things yeah, sure. etc so I think most of them are sort of have the inside track on on these jobs it's a question of you know them applying and everything because we're talking everything from the big companies um, you know the city and county the federal government UH Hawaiian Airlines Bank of Hawaii technology. HMS there, these are all tech jobs for those major corporations, as yeah. well as many others. Well, you know, what you say raises an interesting question. It affects you and ADECO. You know, I'm sure it's different now than it was 18 years ago. Hmm? Very. And, um, and I'm sure that uh, more people are looking for jobs, are fully aware of Craigslist, and yeah. fully aware that they can go on one of these uh, sites, and it'll say employment opportunities, and go direct. They don't think too much about you. They don't think too much about a deco. That's right. They, they do their own thing. And, you know, I guess there's also a ratio on the employee side, one out of six or whatever it may be. Not in every possibility it's going to work. That's you know? right. But it's, yeah, it's free. I guess it's free with you anyway, isn't it? If well, I'm an employee looking for a job, that's right. I don't have to pay you anything. No, that's it. It, no. it is free to them. And so that, that you know, raises an interesting question because with the unemployment so low, we are getting more employers that are willing to, quote, hire us or use us. Because they're slightly desperate. Right, exactly. <laughs> but, of course, many times they have started on their own looking, yeah. and maybe after a month or so they've just given up because yeah. they've either gotten a lot of garbage or they are still, you know, not don't have what they want. So then they'll come and go, oh, find me something, I'll pay any, you know, find me someone, right? Yeah. So, of course, the challenge is finding the person. So a lot of times what, what's happening is we are having to take people that are already working. I mean, the, you don't necessarily want someone that's just sitting around unemployed to fill the job. The best people are already working, right? Oh, so that's, oh see, so that's, take them away. Exactly. <laughs> so that's something that we can do that the, the company can't really call up their competitor and say, oh, you no. know, I speak to so-and-so, no. I'd like to hire, right? Well, I'd be mad at everybody that's else. Right. Yeah. So that's something that we can do, you see, is part of what our, you know, job entails. So. That makes it very interesting, you know, yeah. taking, and I've asked some employers, I've said, so, um, out of your competition, do you know some fabulous people there that are working that you might want on your team, you know, and, and sometimes they'll come up with some great ideas, and yeah. that's a perfect place for me to start, you're right? the person in the middle. Right, exactly. You act as the agent, so that's to speak. Right. Yeah. That's right, yeah, yeah. so that works out really well. On the other hand, I, when I'm talking to candidates, I ask them, what's your dream job like? I mean, where would you like to work? And we can also market to Canada. 
So if they say, oh, I'd want to work here, I'd want to work there, then I tell them, you know, that I could certainly make an, you know, make a call, check to see what might be available, and market them directly. Yeah. So you, you can give them an angle. But I would guess, just from what you said up to now, is that there's not so many employees looking for work through you as there are employers looking for work through you right now in this market. That's right. That's yeah. right. That would, yeah, that would be probably the case right now. So it makes it a very interesting balance. Yeah, right? it does. Yeah. But let's, let's, uh, let's look at exactly how you would operate um, on behalf of um, an employer. Okay? Uh, you have to test people. That's right. You have to find out how good they really are. Because That's as right. you said, not everybody gives you a straight skinny on the qualifications. That's right. So when you're working for an employer, and like you could be working for either or both, I suppose, um, you know, uh, how do you measure the applicant who walks in the door to be sure that you've got somebody who's not going to be a disappointment as against the specifications for Correct. the job? Well, if we have a detailed job description, which obviously we don't always have, ADECO, believe it or not, has 3,000 assessments. So this is everything from, you know, personality types to basic accounting functions. You know, can they do GL? Can they do um, journal entries? Can they do AR, AP, payroll? Or, so th there are all these tests available that are called assessments that I can email to a potential candidate and see what kind of results. Everything, including typing, data entry, we can measure all of that. How, how, how do you know that somebody isn't just shining you on about their qualifications? I, part of it's going to be smell, right? <laughs> right. Part of, you know, you, you've been around a long time. Right, you know right. when somebody's shining you. But um, how do you tell objectively so that you can sort of guarantee, or not guarantee, but you know, give a, a real assurance to the employer that this is real. Okay, so first of all, there's these assessments that are available that you know I, I can have them do either in our office or they can do it at home. The other thing is that I always check references. Now, you know, um, and I always tell them I want manager your manager references. I don't want friends, family, and coworkers. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the reason is I tell them that these references are basically work ethic type references. You know, how'd you work under pressure? How'd you work in the office? How'd you get along with everybody? Come in on time. But you're right, exactly, <laughs> the timeliness. But the last question is, would you rehire this person? Sure. So a manager is the best person, or the person that hired them, because if it's a coworker, if it's you know friends or family, they can't answer that question, yeah. you know, logically or truthfully. So I tell them, this is why I always want managers, is because of the fact that hopefully your previous managers are gonna say absolutely yes, Hated to lose them. It was wonderful and everything. So that's another check. So we've got the assessments and we've got reference checking. You know, I love this conversation and you're going to love my next question, which is going to be right after this break. And my next question, just put you on notice, <laughs> okay. is how can you tell when the reference is telling you the truth? We'll be right back and Sandra is going to answer that question. This is Think Tech. That's Sandra O'Hara. <laughs> This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. from the Foundation for a Better Life. Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea comes on every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join us. I like to bring in guests that talk about all types of things that come across the sea to Hawaii. Not just law, love, people, ideas, history. Please join us for Law Across the Sea. Bingo. I told you we'd be back, and we are back, with Sandra O'Hara of ADECO. She's a tech employment specialist for 18 long years, and she doesn't look 18 yet. That's the magic of it. it whatever it is, it's doing well, and it agrees with you, Sandra. Well, thank you. So my, my, my zinger question, <laughs> okay, you call up the, uh, the boss, uh, and, uh, you know, you're going to get all kinds of different answers. It's never the two same. And, and they're not necessarily trained in how to respond to you. That's you right. know, sometimes yes. Sometimes. 
Um, and they may say, sorry, Sandra, we never disclosed information like that. Man, that's laden with meaning, laden <laughs> with meaning. <laughs> what, what do you make of it when this manager person that was listed as a, resume, as, as a, as a reference um, says something like, sorry, we don't, you know, we actually And believe that. it or not, there are many corporations that don't allow their people to give references. And yeah. so they will um, give an answer like, oh, you have to call HR, yeah. or they can tell you that, oh, they work from this state to this state, yeah. but I'm sorry, we can't provide any yeah. information. Name, so, rank, and serial exactly. number. Exactly. Yeah. So that, that does come up. Um, believe it or not, um, there are times if I have um, of either red flags or the chemistry is just not, doesn't seem right, you don't have to contact people that are on a per person's reference. In other words, this is a small town. So if I see that they've worked at the Bank of Hawaii, and, and believe it or not, our clients do the same thing. They don't care what a person says their reference is. They'll call up somebody they know and they say, well, give me the real scoop on this is that, person. Is that okay? Absolutely. Now, I mean, even if the employee, employee to the applicant doesn't know that you're calling, that's right. it's okay to call. That's right. Small town, so, very valuable. That's right. And yeah. I've had that happen because I've had clients go, I think I'm going to do some checking myself. They'll call the, you know, they'll, they'll look at the uh, resume, they'll see a company they know, and they'll pick up the phone to call the president, president to president. You yeah. know, could you give me the real scoop it on this person? It pays to be a president. <laughs> so, and so I say you can't control that, right? It's, it's a free world. It's, it's open information. You can't say don't call this person, don't call this person. Well, does anybody do worry that? about defamation, that kind of claim? I mean, suppose, and this is a, you know, sort of an extreme example, but suppose the, the, the CEO says, you know, that, that applicant's terrible and it's really awful and don't hire him or her. Um, and, and it's because he doesn't like them. It's because it's not really true. Now, okay. do people worry about defamation in this context? I'm not sure in that context, because if, if it was an exception, like only one person, you know, but others had just raved about this person, they, then it could be a real personal thing, right? Because there are people that have personal vendettas. It's a small town. Them. That's right. It's a very small <laughs> town. So again, as I said, I would, you know, really you know, do due diligence and try to cover as much. So you try to get triangulation exactly. from various points of view. Exactly. Ah, yeah. Just to make it fair to everybody, you yeah. know, to the applicant as well. Yeah. So Now suppose you get a, I really enjoy this conversation. Suppose you get a, a, a reference, a manager, and the manager, without any corporate policy on it, says, I never, I never discuss that. I can't discuss that. And there's no good reason, you know, there's no corporate policy, small company, but that's what he or she says to you. I mean, do you ever take away a, a message that something went wrong here? Exactly. And he is trying to protect himself, but also, you know, doesn't want to make stink with the employee. Um, so he's going to just give you a flat effect. Exactly. And how can you tell when that's real or not? Well, I don't know about telling whether that's real or not, but I'm th what I would do is I would move on to other references. In other words, you know, it's not fair, like you mentioned, it was just a, one person didn't like it. Suppose they all say that. <laughs> If they all said that, then that is, should be a very good clue, right? That there's a problem. You're learning now. That's yeah. right. That's right. So anyway, but again, just to be fair to everybody, you know, um, that that's where I would do my due diligence and continue yeah. further check. I mean, flip it over to the other side of the coin now. Suppose you get a manager who says, Joe Dokes is the kindest, most wonderful human being I have ever known in my life. And he's so great and wonderful and on and on and on and on, mm -hmm. on to the point where it's, it's hyperbole. Uh -huh. um, how do you deal with that? Because, you know, sometimes that's not true. That's right. That's not true. That's and, he, right. and he's just the kind of person, for one reason or another, who feels he has to boost his, maybe there's a deal going on with him and the employee, the applicant. Uh, how, do you, how do you gauge that? Well, that's why you don't base everything on one yeah. reference, right? That's yeah. why you have to, you know, continue on with multiple references yeah. and to just to see what you know what checks out the checks and balances yeah. so I would definitely not just stop with one yeah. especially if it came back like that yeah now do you do you um, reveal what you learned you reveal what you learned I, I assume to your client the employer do you ever tell the employee what you learned in your inquiries not not in in a direct sense because it really is confidential we don't you know I usually I use a form actually an outline where there's some set questions um, but we don't um, tell the employee oh you know I'm so sorry but so and so you know was not a good reference yeah it was not a good reference because it's it is very it's it is not good for future relationships that's right that's right so we don't 
you know, share that yeah, and everything. Yeah. But I was going to uh, mention a couple other things. I don't know if your um, readers um, read their Hawaii business news, okay. but we were featured in, um, in an issue in April of last year where they talked about all the different headhunters, and it was called Secrets yeah. of Headhunters. Oh, good. And it's really, it's really nice. It includes not only a deco, um, as you can see, we're on the first page, yeah. but our, uh, you know, others in the field are, quote, competitors as well. And it has amazed me that I have candidates walking in that have made copies of this article and, and looking at my picture and they go, oh, we came to you because we saw your picture. And I thought, well, that's really quite, yeah, you know, quite yeah. nice. Wait till you see what happens after this show. Huh? <laughs> I see. Well, I was telling your people before you came in that I wanted to also offer your listeners something. Um, ADECO publishes a salary guide. And believe it or not, you know, most, most things um, that are done with companies that are um, based on the mainland, they never include Hawaii. But ADECO does include Hawaii in terms of salary guide. So I, you know, was looking and thinking that, oh, I would tell your um, listeners that they can, you know, pick up salary guides from my office. Well, so the last one I had is dated 2017, and I was asking my manager, well, do we have, you know, others, and can I offer, you know, the people that are listening to come by our office and pick them up? He goes, well, it's all online now. So what you need to do is make sure that they have your email address, and so your station does have my email address, that whoever is interested can send us an email, and then we will you know, enter it in a form, and we will get them a salary guide. So this would be helpful to both the HR managers, right? Yeah. Because it gives all this information on all the different types yeah. of jobs, as well as to prospective people looking for work. Yeah, you know what you're worth. That's right. This is really important That's when right. you're negotiating a salary. That's right. <laughs> so I thought that'd be interesting to um, offer it to your listeners to yeah. please contact me, um, and my email address is going to be published. And so therefore, I mean, I'd be more than happy to what, set what them is up. What is it? What is it? Sandra.ohara at adecona.com. And because I don't want them to misspell the adeco na, they said that they are putting it on. Well, there it is. There, there it, it is. Yeah. You see it? Okay. Yeah. And so I, you know, I, I'd love to hear from your listeners that would like a copy of the latest 2018 salary guide that's now very valuable. Very yes, valuable. I think it, it, so. It's, it's the grease that facilitates exactly. the whole process exactly. to know where you are. But I want to take a, the last few minutes of our discussion and to talk about what's happened in the 18 years in terms of the market in this state. You know, I remember the days, and you do too, because that's when we met, of 221 of all these startup companies that had money coming in, investment money from one source or another through 221, they had the money to burn, so to speak, uh, and, and, and they hired a lot of people. It was a very active market. And I remember all these tech uh, events and organizational meetings where you were there. Yes. You were, and you know, everybody coming over to you and say, hi, Sandra, here's my card, Sandra. <laughs> and, you know, it's not the same anymore. 221 went down. A lot of the talent left town. And it's, they're both inter, interdependent, the tech companies and the tech talent. If I can't find tech talent, I'm not going to have a tech company. Right. If I'm tech talent and I can't find a company, I'm not going to stay around. Right. And after 221 went down, I remember a lot of tech talent left town summarily. That was right. that. Right. So, okay, let's assume that. But how has the mix of jobs changed? You talk about information technology. Well, you know, there's also biochemistry. Um, there, I mean, there's all the sciences in the university, all those startups that once existed, I don't know if they still do. Um, are you still involved in that? Um, what is the situation now compared to, say, 2003 or four? I'm not as involved, mainly because um, I know that they are there because I've attended some of these open house events where they have uh, cohorts are there. Yeah, right, right. And they're these young, I mean, they look like they're in high school almost. <laughs> but, you know, they definitely seem to be, you know, coming up with opportunities um, and they're being given money to do, to do what they're doing. So I think it's still alive and well, but it's just on a much smaller scale than when 221 was extremely active and we could see a lot more money pouring in. Yeah. So it's, it's nice to see that they're, um, you know, People still are still, something going that's on. right. There's some, something going on. Um, you know the you know Hank Rogers and his group is still you know still active. working. That's at it, right. Yeah, yeah. And so that you know that that still exists. So that's very encouraging. On the scale issue that you mentioned a minute ago, it seems to me that Hawaii had aspirations of having large scale here. I mean, I remember Ed Cadman's view of the right. of the tech co uh, campus around the medical school didn't happen. Right. Um, you know, all kinds of possibilities where. There would be um, you know, a lot of tech companies come from the mainland, 
do business here, hire local, and all this didn't happen. Um, and so the, the question I put to you, and, and this is really something that I think about all the time, is if it was aspirational back in the early 2000s, and if it has sort of slowed down, maybe a lot actually slowed down since that time around the, the end of 221, um, what are the probabilities, possibilities now? You know, Hawaii dreamed so hard. All the dreamers in Hawaii dreamed about this becoming a tech state. And when we speak of diversification, we're speaking of diversification into tech, right. not innovation, tech. That's what it was, because we knew that on the mainland things, big things were happening in Silicon right. Valley. And all that. So um, the question is, you know, when, when, you take, when you take a reduction the way we did for one reason or another, and here we are now, is it still possible for Hawaii to be a state that is seriously diversified into technology, or is that something that has come and gone? <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm going to say it, it does appear that it is somewhat come and gone, and that's why this whole construction um, industry is just booming. And, and look at all the you know cranes and, and look at all what's going on in Kaka'ako, both in um, affordable housing as well as, you know, multi-million dollar, you know, penthouses as well. So I think that that is what has drawn the market, is a lot of that has taken, taken over, which is... In a way, unfortunate because you know tech is an exciting industry and oh, there's yeah. so much potential. Yes. You know, and so I don't know if I you know would honestly say that it's dead, but it's definitely on the back burner as compared to what it was when we were you know starting yeah. out. And one of the great takeaways for me of this discussion is that you're not only doing tech, you're hedging your bets with construction. Okay, and I remember seriously uh, one tech. A lot of people were coming. A lot of local kids. Were, had made some money on the mainland, we came back mm -hmm. in the early 2000s to be involved in the tech industry everybody thought was going to happen, which didn't happen. But a lot of them you know, stayed. I mean, some of them left. They said, this isn't working out. Right. i got to go now. Uh, but some of them stayed, and they went into other industries. And I'm not going to name his name, but there was one guy who was pretty famous at the time who had made money on the mainland, came back. Everybody had great expectations, going to do fantastic things. That didn't work out. So he went into real estate. <laughs> He worked for a developer developing properties. And so my question to you, this is the last question I will have time to ask, Sandra, is, is if I were a young person, a little adrift about what I was going to do, but dedicated to be in Hawaii, a millennial today, uh, from all that you know about the markets that are here, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the markets that have demand, uh, what should I what should I do? What should I study? What should I, you know, address myself to as a, a good job that'll take me to a good career, allow me to buy my house and stay here? What do you think? Boy, that's a tough one. I mean, that's, that's a really a tough one because, as I say, with the millennials now, part of, to me, their problem is, you know, their work ethic. It's like, what's in it for me, you know? So it's very challenging for them to seek out some of these careers because of that you know so in terms of what is the next up-and-coming thing um, one of the things that I know I was um, privy to seeing is the combining the real estate um, arena with high-tech they're doing some phenomenal 3d um, you know type selling, selling properties exactly, modeling properties. exactly but it's very um, you know um, upscale and it's very sophisticated so you can see these fabulous apartments and they're doing these panoramic views and you can see what views you can see out the windows and things like that so kind of combining tech with you know brick and mortar yeah and other things other, other things, things exactly classical industries hotels for example uh, real estate is a perfect example all aspects of real estate i know some people who made money this way right and i think you're absolutely right and and you take it you know the tech is the the tail that wags the dog, so to speak. That's right. And all of a sudden, you're making big money on a classic, you know, conventional industry by tweaking it. Right. With exactly. Tech. <laughs> exactly. So that to me is what's exciting. Is that's what's going to you know, the merger of of the two. You yeah. know, yeah. is is the way of, of the you're future. A great spot to know that. Um, when when people come in to see you, I mean, are, are you going to be available, Sandra? When when people come in to see you to say, look, I'm adrift. I'm a millennial. I don't know what to do. I'm living at home. I can't get a job. Would you please counsel with me? I'll give you my CV. I'll give you my grades. 
Um, tell me what you think. Would you talk to that person? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. My, my door is open. I love to talk to, you know, all kinds of people because it really gives me insight as well, right? Sure, sure. And as I said, it's, um, I believe that everybody's employable. And so by finding out more about, you know, these different people, I believe that there are jobs for them. So it's not, you know, it's not a cookie cutter thing. Yeah, and that's yeah. why I love talking to you. Yeah. You need an assistant? <laughs> <laughs> Can't afford you. <laughs> Thank you, Sandra. <laughs> Sandra O'Hara, ADECO, my friend for a long, long time, still doing it and uh, doing it well. Thank you so much, Sandra. Thank you, Jay, <laughs> for, for having me on your show. Aloha.